Hello everyone and welcome back. As of recently, we have just got the Wish Keepers or the Quest released, and from playing around with it, it's quite a simple yet very powerful exotic to use for everything endgame focused. With the ability to suspend targets freely, the following has made every subclass in game capable of suspending outside the use of strand subclasses or for exotic armors, and for that I want to show you how good the exotic can get when paired with strand hunters. Not only will this build be capable of endgame play, but it will also offer you a near unlimited suspend on hand, increased weapon damage via Foe Tracer, amazing ad clearing via Aspects, and most importantly, high damage resistance. So, let's take a look at how this all works out. Starting with Aspects, we have Widow's Silk, where you gain an additional grenade charge and grapple hook creates a grapple point. Then we have Whirling Maelstrom, where destroying a tangle will create a violent mass of strand fibers. It's recommended to have Maelstrom Aspect only because of how useful the Aspect's effect is against suspended targets. While using Widow's Silk, it is useful for the times 2 Shackle Grenades. On the other hand, since we do have an alternative way of creating Suspend, we can use other Aspects as well and not lose the originality of the build. Fragments, we have Further Continuity that increases the duration of Suspend, Unravel and Sever. Further Transmutation, while having Woven Mail, Weapon Finder Blows will create Tangle. Thread of Warding, where picking up an orb of power guides you with a mail, and Thread of Generation, where dealing damage generates grenade energy. Out of everything being used, the Thread of Transmutation and Warding are the key fragments to have when creating tangles easily. Although the build will rely on our powered midi and foe tracers to create tangles fairly easily, the above fragments are handy for when one of the three options do fail. This is particularly important as Foe Tracer can only work when our main strand weapon is netting kills, so if that fails, we then have our melee available as backup, which then leads into the two fragments as long as we meet their requirements. Having generation continuity will help our shackle grenades and ultimately our suspend effect for long, so overall you'll get everything in hand that you will need for endgame right here and there. For the general mods and stats, both resilience and discipline will play a part in the build like normal, but your melee will also play a big part when for activating tangles when we need them most. For resilience, we have Arla Tier 8 for a 24% damage reduction, and this will be combined with a thread of warding for an extra damage reduction increase upon collecting orbs of power. Nothing too important for this stat you need to be made aware of, as the base of the stat is there to help with reducing as much incoming damage as possible in all content. You can go higher, or you can keep it wherever it is, but at tier 8, that should be enough. Your discipline should be around tier 10, which will give you a 1 minute 16 cooldown rate, which is good enough for the build, as this will be paired with the Federal Generation Fragment and Shackle Grenades. We do have Grenade Kickstart with a x4 armor charge, so this will ultimately give you a 34.4% grenade regen upon activation, while also having the Impact Induction, Absolution, and Distribution to further aid the stat. To be quite honest, with further generation available, all you would need for the start alone is just the kickstart mod, since the amount of energy being returned is going to be quite a lot, anyways. For strength at tier 3, although the start is extremely low, it is still going to be seeing some level of use as we play. Having the momentum transfer and outreach mod will be helpful with aiding this stat cooldown a bit faster while at 2 minutes 5 seconds cooldown. With Absolution and Distribution on hand, this should be more than enough to support the melee without too much sacrifice needed on your end. Now this next section will be focusing on the armor charges and additional mods that are recommended for the build. Charged Up will give you a plus 1 to how many charge stacks you have, while Stacks and Stacks will make sure we get 2 armor charges instead of 1. After that, having the Harmonic Siphon and Powerful Attraction mod will help with creating and collecting orbs at a standard rate. And then lastly, reserves plus scavenger mods will help with increasing the payload of our heavy strand weapon of use. Now, for weapons being used, we have the Wishkeeper bow, which has been newly released and now available. The following is the first strand based bow to be released in game, and it's also the first strand based exotic that can spend without the need of strand subclass traits. It's a simple but versatile weapon that I can see being useful not only for strand users but for all subclass types since the exotic effect provides free suspend after building up enough charges to do so. With its strength of suspending targets, it makes the already powerful strand build even more powerful with little effort. 
I highly recommend players grab the following as soon as possible since it does provide a huge buff to a number of builds in game. Now for heavy we have the Cementitium rocket launcher with field prep and explosive light which is a perfect combo for a sword build like this. With its high explosive damage, using this against suspended targets will make short work of them 9 times out of 10, while using this against a suspended champion will provide players a quick way of deleting them before they can go ahead and close the gap. It's also quite decent at boss damage when kept in mind, so overall a pretty good strand rocket launcher to have. So with my conclusion to build is that with the infinite amount of ways to suspend targets now a thing via the wishkeeper bow, the following can make doing endgame content even more easier than ever before, and I believe this is one of the strongest Jan Hunter builds to date. The build has everything an endgame player would desire, from damage reduction, flexibility of weapons and fragments, good damage output, fast ability regen from start to finish, but ultimately the effect the build has is the quick access to suspend that generally makes taking out large targets and mini bosses a whole lot more easier. The flexible nature of Wishkeeper allows players to change a number of key things within the build without taking too much off from the original design, which is important to note when doing different challenges in game. So for example, suspend grenades can be taken off and replaced with the other two grenades instead for a more active and aggressive playstyle if you desire. At the same time, our aspects such as the Widow Silk could be taken out and then replaced with the Instaring Slam or Threaded Spectrum and then adding in the Thread of Mind to the set will allow you to have an alternative suspend build capable of feeding itself back to back. This is just one example for the Hunter like shown, but this can also be applied to Titans and Warlocks as well for an even more flexible setup all times round. Using Maelstrom with the Wishkeeper Bow seems like the best way forward with the amount of suspend and tangles that can be created, and then using your Throw Tracer effect on top of that means that you'll be getting a times 4 damage buff non-stop when applied right. You have to focus this build on a specific setup that can create a ton of tangles easily as just relying on your abilities alone won't be enough. So as you can see, we have 3 ways of creating tangles, melee, primal weapon, an exotic helm, and fragments and aspects as well. And this is all that you need to make it work as you need to make sure you have plenty of options available in case one thing fails. Having a everything build like shown is great for clearing content fast and efficiently and does not require a large full process with remembering certain fragments to keep in mind of all time. Its capability of stopping large groups of enemies and GMs makes it a great ad clearing build for the already powerful strand subclass and the only way this can get any more better is if we strap the nuke to the given character. Overall, Wishkeeper is a fantastic exotic build for how simple it is, and it's this simplicity that makes the following build synergize so well for endgame alone. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared then please leave a comment below, while at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and sub while here. I will leave a dim link for the build below, and if you want more stuff like this then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.